everyone, Effie here. Today I'm going to make this card using our Tulip Bouquet stamp set. So I start off by stamping this beautiful bouquet image with our Caviar ink, which is a hybrid ink and also Copic friendly. And I'll be using three shades of pink Copics to color all of my tulips. I'm starting off with the lightest shade to color the base of my tulip and I'm using R43. I think it's pronounced Bougainvillea. I'm not 100% sure that's the correct pronunciation but there you have it. It's R43 and I'm just going to color most of my tulip petals with the first lightest color in a light flicking motion. Then I'll take my mid-tone RV14 and I'll continue to add a little bit of shading to the base of my petals. After I'm done with the RV14, I'm gonna go in with my RV25 and just add a little bit of the darker shade. And this is gonna add a tiny bit of contrast and I'll get a nice gradient. Next, I'm gonna take my RV0000, which is evening primrose, and I'm just gonna blend out a little bit of that lightest color, but I actually just go back and um, I add a little bit more of that feathered look with the R43. And I'm going to continue to color all of my tulips in the same manner using these four Copic markers. So I go from lightest to my darkest shade and then I kind of go back and forth depending on how much I want my colors blended. But I'm making sure not to completely overtake the lightest color or the prior color that I just put down. For example, my lightest color is R43. The second or mid-tone color is RV14. The darkest is RV25, as I mentioned before. So after I put down my lightest R43, I go in with a little bit of the RV14 to add the mid-tone, but I don't completely color over that area that I colored with the R43. I kind of pull that mid-tone from the base to about maybe halfway and then with my RV25 I kind of color in about 25% from the base as I go to the top edge of my petal so I don't completely overtake that area that I just colored with the lighter color as I go in with my darker markers. Uh, I hope this is not too confusing as I explain it. I don't use Copic markers all that much. My specialty is more in watercoloring, but I did want to break out these markers for today's projects. So I hope that with this video, I will encourage you to use your stash, what you have in your stash that you've been uh, too intimidated to use. I have been a little bit reluctant to use my Copics because I'm not used to them. I was intimidated by them, but honestly, you just kind of have to break them out and just use them. Remember, it's only paper. So I'm going to continue coloring and I'll just turn on some music and I'll be back once the coloring is complete.
Now I'm going to start coloring in my leaves and other foliage within this tulip bouquet. So I just use a combination of several greens. I chose the YG61 as my base color and then several darker shades to just add a little bit more contrast to my greens. There isn't that much of a strategy as to where I place my shading. I really follow one rule of thumb and that is I place the darkest shading to the areas that are directly behind my floral bulbs or the petals. Uh, so, and also I add darker shading to the bases of my stems and leaves. So the bottom portion of my stems and leaves will be the darkest as well as the areas directly uh, behind my flower petals because I think that that might be where uh, the least amount of light reaches. And then the color will get lighter as we go up towards the top tips of the leaves. I want to make sure that there's a little bit of contrast with the stems and leaves that are in the forefront of my bouquet. So as you can see, there's about four tulips that are in the forefront, and then you have all those leaves kind of sprouting uh, towards the back. So those four tulips that are in the front, the stems that are uh, for those four tulips, I kind of make sure to leave those a lighter green and then I color in all the leaves that are behind those stems a darker shade of green. So we have a nice mix of the light green stems with the darker green leaves uh, in the background and you have a nice contrast. Now as I continue to color each layer, I kind of go back and forth from lighter hue to darker hue uh, and back and forth uh, blending each layer. As I color, I just use a very light touch as I color in the layers with a light flicking motion and I end up with a nice feathered texture as I go towards the top end of my leaves. But I actually also use the same technique and touch for the tulip petals.
In addition to coloring in the leaves, stems, and tulip petals, I also color in the tiny ferns that are in the background of the entire bouquet using the YG61 Pale Moss. And I'm just going to kind of quickly color in the rest of those tiny, tiny leaves. Once I'm finished coloring my entire bouquet, I'm going to take the coordinating die and die cut this gorgeous image. Uh, after I put the cut side down of the die right onto the paper, I tape it down with a little bit of micro pore tape. And then I'm going to take our two piece foliage cover plate die and I'm going to die cut this from some white cardstock. After I ran both dies through my die cutting machine, I just carefully peeled up that micro pore tape from uh, both panels. Uh, for this two piece foliage cover plate die, I only use that inner piece. It does come in two pieces. I saved the outer piece for another project. For this project, I'll just be using that inner piece, uh, which I carefully punched out. Then I took a side folding A2 white card base and I'll be adhering that inner foliage piece right onto the card base. And I'm using my glue pen to apply tiny uh, strips or lines of glue behind the frame. That's what I'm going to adhere first after I've uh, kind of stabilized that die cut onto my base. I'm just going to start adding a little bit of glue to the ends of each of the foliage uh, that's kind of coming off the card to make sure that the entire die cut is nice and stably adhered onto my card base. Next, I popped up my tulip bouquet right onto the base using some dimensional foam tape. Then I stamped my sentiment from the same tulip bouquet set onto some white cardstock using our caviar hybrid ink. This is the same ink that I inked up our bouquet. Then I trimmed that sentiment into a strip and adhered the strip onto some gray cardstock. I made sure to leave a little bit of the gray cardstock showing at the top and bottom edges of my sentiment strip. And I actually scuffed a little bit of my red nail polish onto that sentiment strip. So I took my sand eraser and just kind of buffed or erased it out. That sand eraser is great for taking off uh, any kind of smudges or nicks of um, ink or nail polish on your cards or cardstock. So once I finished popping up that sentiment strip, I finished off embellishing my card with our glossy black sequins. And my card is now complete. I hope you all enjoyed today's project and video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.